Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at backing up your server. Now, if you remember in the last screencast, I talked about how to set up the Time Machine service inside the server application itself. And the Time Machine service is designed to allow you to have uh, outside machines back up to your server or to a drive that's connected to your server. So if you've got laptops in your household or other Macs that are connected on the local network, those Macs could back up to a centralized location that uh, is attached to your server. Now this week what I wanted to do is show you how to back up your server itself uh, because sometimes we turn on that service and I saw some confusion from people going how does the server back up when I turn on the Time Machine service? Uh, uh, basically again that, that service is only for remote machines not for the server itself. So I want to show you how to back up your server so that you've got that covered as well. Especially since we've started doing all of this work setting up your server. I don't want to have anything go wrong uh, in case you have a crash or something like that. Uh, we want to make it so that you can restore from where you were instead of having to start over. So there's a few things that you can do uh, with your server backups. What I'm going to do, again, everything that I want to do right now, I don't need the server app, so I'm going to put that down. And what I'm going to do is just go into System Preferences. Now, uh, backing up with uh, for OS X Server works the same as if you were backing up any other Mac. And so if you had a Mac with a drive attached, uh, you would come into System Preferences here and just go right into Time Machine. Now the benefit of Time Machine is the fact that Time Machine will give you incremental backups. Uh, just like it describes in here, it gives you hourly backups for the past 24 hours, daily backups for the past month, and weekly backups for previous months. And it keeps all of those different backups going for you automatically so that if you need to go back in time to restore a particular file, you can do that very easily. Now Time Machine also will allow you to go back in time to uh, actually uh, pull some of your data back. Like let's say you need to do a fresh install of your machine. You could use Time Machine to then restore your machine uh, and all of the different data and things that you've got from your server. So it does back up the server items and allows you to do that as well. Now, Time Machine is very easy to set up. You just go in and select the disk that you have connected uh, to your server for the purposes of backing up. In this case, I have this server backup drive that I've already got connected and ready to go. So I'm just going to cancel that because I've already got it going. You can see it's preparing a backup right now. And then you just throw the switch and the Time Machine service starts. And so what I would recommend is that you get a drive uh, that is uh, at least double what your server is, but better if you can go higher. It all depends on how far back in time you want to go because what server, uh, what uh, Time Machine will do is delete the oldest backup once the disk gets full. So you want to figure out kind of what that range is and how you want to set that up. But uh, get a disk, attach it to your server, and use that for your backup. And so that's what I've got set up right here. So that's one of the first options, and it's a good one. Now, what you don't want to do, though, is rely just on Time Machine because Time Machine can be a hassle to restore from. Uh, because now what you've got to do is do a clean install if your machine goes down. Then you've got to go through the Migration Assistant to come and pull your data back from the Time Machine backup. And it can take quite a bit of time. So there's another option that I want to cover uh, that will help you make an actual clone of your server hard drive that you can just restore from and it, you can boot from it. And that's a program called SuperDuper. Okay, here we are over on the ShirtPocket website, and this is SuperDuper. And again, the beauty of this application is that it makes a bootable copy of your main hard drive. And so what that means is that you could actually boot from that external hard drive uh, and have that run your entire operating system. And so the reason we do this is because when you clone your server, if your server for some reason goes down, maybe the internal hard drive goes down, you're able to boot from this external drive with this clone that you made and actually restore your entire server from there. Not only that, but you could actually run from the clone uh, while you're getting a new drive sent in uh, that you would then later put inside your uh, Mac that you've got running server and then you can clone your clone back to that main drive and start over just like everything is the same, like nothing's changed. And so that's one of the benefits of it. Now, there's a couple of things. Super Duper, you can make the clone for free. You don't have to purchase the application. Um, but uh, if you want to purchase it, it's $27.95. And what that does is allows you to schedule uh, the uh, software to run at certain times to clone your server. So I would highly recommend buying the application, not only just to support the developer, because it is a great piece of software, 
and should be supported, uh, but also because uh, you and I don't usually remember to do our backups on time, and it's that one time we didn't remember where something goes wrong. This way you set it, and it just runs, and you don't have to think about it. Uh, so let me show you how it works. Uh, one other advantage of it is you can actually put SuperDuper on the same drive that you have your Time Machine backups on because SuperDuper is uh, a complement to Time Machine. It, it works together on the same drive. It won't cause any issues. So that's a great benefit of using it as well. So let me just pop this down here. And this is the actual SuperDuper interface. It's very simple. You can see here I've got uh, a copy line here that I'm going to copy to and from. Uh, using whatever uh, particular script I've got, and then I've got some options to set it up. So what you would do is you would say, I want to copy whichever drive, select your server hard drive, whatever you've got server running on right there, like I did, and you want to copy it to whatever drive you want to copy it to. And in this case, uh, I want to put it on the same uh, backup drive that I've got that I'm using Time Machine for, and you can see it even has the Time Machine icon on it. Now, I can back up using particular scripts if I want to. So I can back up all files, just the user files. Uh, I could do the restore through here and all of that. Uh, or you can do custom scripts that I've got set up as well. And so for those of you that wonder, this is a script that just excludes my Backblaze backup information uh, so that Backblaze doesn't get confused when my, uh, when my clone drive is running saying, hey, I got two drives that look the same. So that's just what that script is for. Uh, now, what it does, it tells you what it's going to do. And if you just click on Options here, you can select different options that you want to use. Uh, from here, you can do it erase uh, the server backup and then copy the newer files over. You can just copy newer files or copy different files. What I recommend is doing the smart update uh, of the server because that way every time it runs, it's only going to update what's changed. It's not going to have to update everything else because your first backup will take a little while to, uh, to get done. And so you want to make sure that uh, you uh, give some time for that, but the smart update is the way you want to go for that. Uh, and then you can even say, you know, hey, when it's done backing up, you can restart uh, from the backup you just made. You can set the server to backup as a startup disk. You can eject the server backup disk. I mean, you can do a number of different, you can even shut down the computer if you want to, which again, I don't recommend um, when you're using uh, server. Uh, but anyways, there's, some, there's just a number of little uh, options there. Again, in the advanced, you can run some shell scripts if you want to or install packages. Uh, I just generally leave that alone. I'm not really concerned about it. You just want to make sure it says Smart Update. So I'll just say OK. Now that's all set and ready to go, and it tells me what it's going to do. If I press Copy now, it's going to use the Backup All Files script right here to copy this drive to this drive using Smart Update. And so basically your Time Machine backups on that backup are going to be preserved and all the data is going to be copied. Uh, now, what I would recommend is if, again, if you purchase the software, just go into the schedule here. And as you can see here, you can actually schedule when you want to do the backups and how they work. So you can say do it, you know, the first, second or third of the week. You can say to do it uh, every day. Uh, it's up to you on how you want to do that. Uh, for those of you that might be connecting the drive manually, you can say whenever I connect this particular drive. Um, and it tells you down here again what it's going to do. And so what I want to do is I'm going to copy it, um, you know, every weekday because that's when I do a lot of my work. I'm not going to worry about the weekends. And it's just going to it's just going to run that. And I'm going to run it, you know, late at night. Uh, let's just say um, I'll do it at 12 a.m. and just do it that way so that it runs in the middle of the night and I don't have to worry about it uh, not running. So then I would say OK. And what it's done is it's added this to my schedule. So all I do is I can click, click on my schedule right there and say copy now. And what it's going to do is automatically run the process and start it. And so let's let it run through here just so you can get a feel for what the interface does when it comes up. And so what it does, it says, hey, I'm preparing to copy the file. So it's prepared the drive. And now it starts the process, like I said, of copying all of that data over. It's going to compare it. It's going to copy it. You can see it's finding things that are already up to date. And uh, there's a bar right here that'll, that'll go through. And when it's done, it'll say this, the copy was successful. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and let it do its thing. And when it's done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. OK, here we are on the other side here. You can see that SuperDuper has finished its copy. You can see that it's copied all of the files over. And it's made uh, my uh, drive there a server backup. It's made it bootable so that I can boot off of it. And so that kind of gives you an idea of how SuperDuper works. You want to make sure that you do have a clone of your main server hard drive. Uh, so now that we've talked about uh, making a clone and doing a time machine backup, now let's talk about backing up some of the specific data that is found in the server application. And we'll start with how do you back up your open directory? OK, another thing that we might want to back up on our server is your open directory. Uh, your open directory hold, holds all of your user accounts, your groups, uh, any of the 
uh, machines that you've bound to the server, uh, their information, all that stuff is stored in this open directory. And so just in case something goes wrong with your open directory, you may want to restore uh, from a you know older date. And so you might want to keep your open directory uh, master backed up as well. And so built into server is the option to be able to do that. So in the open directory service here, we've got our uh, open directory master right here. Just come down to the gear. Now we're going to say archive our open directory master. And we get this drop down here that walks us through the process. So we want to choose uh, where to uh, actually archive the file. And so we're going to say choose. And it asks you to choose where you want it to go. I'm just going to hit this little arrow here. And what we're going to do is just put it in this server backup folder and say save. And so now it's got it uh, in that area where it's going to save it. And then you put in a password in uh, because the archive will be password protected. So let me put that in right now. And once you've got that in, click Next. And it says, OK, I'm going to create. It says an archive of this master will be created with these settings. That's where it's going to put it. There's an archive password. We're going to say Archive. And so now it's going ahead and archiving the Open Directory Master. And it's going through the process. You can see here's the status bar here. And it's going to actually put uh, a file for me right in this area right here. And it's going to put a sparse image in there. Now, you can see mine says Untitled. Uh, that's because uh, I didn't put a name in uh, when I started the backup. But uh, there we go. Now it's done. And so in order to see that, I can actually just go into the Finder here. And let's just go down to my Drobo. And let's go to Server Backup. And there is my uh, Open Directory Master Archive. You can see it's 8.5 megabytes, not a big file. But this contains all of my data uh, that, uh, that I've got for my Open Directory. So now that's backed up and that's ready to go. And you might want to run that from time to time just to make sure that you've got that there. And everything's up and ready to go uh, for you. So that's how you archive your Open Directory. Now I've got one more piece of software that I want to show you that I found recently uh, that uh, backs up all of your server information for you automatically, and that's called Bender. Okay, here we are over on uh, Robo Robot Cloud on a website here. I found this uh, article here on Bender, which is an automated backup of OS X server settings. And so uh, basically what it does is it backs up uh, all of the different files, including your open directory, which I just showed you how to back up uh, by itself. But it'll also do a single backup of all of your settings found in server admin and server. Uh, it also will back up your uh, Postgres uh, database uh, you, that's used by Profile Manager and Wiki Services. So uh, it's got a bunch of different things you can back up. Uh, it supports OS 10.6 uh, server uh, all the way up through the Yosemite server or server 4 that we've got. And on this website, too, it, it shows you how do you um, use the backups that it creates to restore your settings. So it's got instructions on how to do the restore in here. I'm not going to walk you through that um, because I don't need to restore it. But I just want to show you that those instructions are sitting right here. So all you have to do is click the uh, ba uh, download right here to download Bender application. And so if I just come up here, I've already done that. And let me just double click on the package there. And let me put this down. And so here we are, welcome to Bender. So I'm going to continue and continue here and agree to the terms and say install. And it's going to ask me to authenticate. And I'm going to say install the software. So now it's configuring it, writing it. Now it's been successful. So I'm going to close that down. And I'm going to go in here to the Finder. And what Bender has done is if you go into the root of your uh, drive there, and you go to Server, you go to your server hard drive, whatever that is, and you'll notice right on the root level there, you've got a backups folder that it creates. And inside there, what it's done is it's backed up my open directory data right here. It's at backed up Profile Manager, uh, Server Admin, so all the different pieces that go into the various settings. Uh, the wiki database is right here, as well as any wiki files that you've got. And in this case, I haven't set up wiki yet, so I don't have anything there. But as you can see, Bender is, a, uh, is kind of a great application. It just runs in the background at 10 p.m. every night and makes these backups, and it'll just put them in here by date and allow you to back up your files. Now, if you want to see where uh, Bender installs itself, it's not in the Applications folder. It's actually under here on Library. And if you come down to Launch... Uh, Damon's, let's see, right here, 
And it's right there. It's this robotcloud.vendor.plist. That's where it installs itself. So just in case you wanted to know where that was and how it functioned, it's a launch daemon that runs in the background. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to back up your server to keep all of the files and things and all the hard work that you've put into the settings, uh, making sure those things are backed up just in case something goes wrong so you know how to restore your server and get it back up and running in a hurry. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.